Uno. Starting on number 34. Okay, now I'm just trying to get it onto the screen here because I have to now control both screens independently. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ba'da naqul a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani ar-rajim bismillahi ar-rahman ar-rahim wal yastafi fi al-lazina la yajiduna nikahan hatta yughniyahum allahu min fadlih wal lazina yabtaghuna al-kitaba mimma malakat aymanukum fakatibuhum فكاتبوهم إن علمتم فيهم خيرا وآتوهم مما لله الذي آتاكم ولا تكرهوا فتياتكم على البغاء إن أردنا تحصنا لتبتغوا, لتبتغوا عرض الحياة الدنيا ومن يكرهن فإن الله من بعد إكراههن غفور رحيم وَلَقَدْ أَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكُمْ آيَاتٍ مُبَيِّنَاتٍ وَمَثَلًا مِنَ الَّذِينَ خَلَوْا مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ وَمَوْعِظَةً وَمَوْعِظَةً لِلْمُتَّقِينَ I think we must do that verse. We must do verse number 34. Let me just open up another Mus'haf here on my computer. I can't look that way all the time. Um, just give me one second. Okay, now I'm opening up, just opening up the wrong side. Okay, so this verse actually brings to the end of uh, the end of that discussion over there. Um, just about the, the chastity part. Now it's going to go more into uh, discussions about privacy. We'll just get there in a moment. Um, so to me... Okay. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, um, and we must do that verse number 34. Khala means what? To go by or to pass before. Right? Alladheena khalaw min qablikum. From those who had passed before you. Wa maw'idhatan and an admonition lil muttaqeen. Or a lesson lil muttaqeen for the people of taqwa. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you it's ending of that section of the of the surah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is basically telling you in all of what was mentioned before, there are clear verses for you. Clear signs for you. Um, and there are clear admonitions there. So this is now just relating to all of those verses that went before this. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about the verses of chastity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about the laws pertaining to uh, the laws pertaining to even claims about people's chastity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you an example uh, of how that played out in a society, in the story of Aisha radiallahu anha. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then admonished people after that to not get into that sort of thing. al khabitha to al-Khabithina, all of those ayat. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala went on to give another admonition to the believers and that admonition was ensure that people get married. 
right, and enable and facilitate that for people. Um, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes and he gives now like probably one of the most allegorical verses in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, um, So, 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 so firstly, there's a connection between the verse before this and this verse. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that his ayat are bayinat. Clear. Right? And the source of that clarity now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah nuru samawat wa ta'ala. He is the light of the heavens and the earth. So the source of that clarity is, is that it comes from Allah. Right? He is the source of, of, of clarity, the source of light of the heavens and the earth. Um, but what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? Let's just go through the, the translation. Let's look at some of the words in the, in the verse. I'm just going to read it and we look at some of the words. Allah nuru samawati wa Allah is the nur, the light of a samawati wal ard. A light, a nur here is also something that illuminates other things, right? So that's part of his meaning. It's not just like I can have a light that's contained. Uh, like maybe just something that's glowing. It still gives a little bit of light to others, but nur it, it focuses on that meaning of illuminating as well. So Allah nuru samawati wal ardu. We know those words. مثل نوره كمشكات. What's a mishkat? It's the it's like the 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 light inside the lamp, right? Um, so it's a you call that a niche. Oh, sorry, sorry, no, no. This is the mishkat is like the lamp. Fiha misbah. The misbah is the is the light in the lamp. Yeah. That's a niche, a hollow in the in yes, the yes. In the light. yes. Exactly. That's exactly it. So. You have the wall, there's a niche in the wall, there's a lamp in that uh, in that space. Right? So, yes. I was going to say now, you can still see them if you go to some of the old masajid. Uh, if you go to some of the old masajid, especially like you in the, uh, like in Turkey, in, in the old masajid in, the, in Mecca. In, uh, now there's some very, very old masajid. Andy? Morba. Morba, that's our religion in there. You'll find it there as well. Uh, um, yeah, you'll still you'll, you'll still see that very frequently. Even in like you know, if you see maybe pictures of Masjid, the Masajid in Palestine and stuff like that, any place where there's old Masajid, you'll see that same thing. Yeah, yes, yes. So, so the Mishkat is the niche. Misbah is the uh, the the light in there. The misbah fi zujaja. The zujaja is the uh, the glass that it's encompassed by. Kaukab is a star, and then uh, duri means something that is like a field, something that is that is illuminated and fueled. And it, it resembles like a, a gem or something. Dur. Durarul Ali. You'll find many of the, the, the ulama, uh, they name their books things like that. They use that word. Dur. All right. Kaukam and Dur. Yuqad from from Waqud. Uh, Waqud is fuel. Right, so yuqadu means something that is fueled, to be fueled. Um, shajara, you know, mubaraka, you know, zaytuna. Zaytuna is oil. From zayt. Right? <clears throat> the fig is zaytun. Teen, no, no, sorry. Uh, teen is, uh, I'm getting confused. Uh, teen is a fig, 
Zeytun is a olive. And you get an oil from that. Yeah. لا شرقية ولا غربية شرقية إيستن غربية ويستن يكاد زيتها يضيء يضيء أضاء يضيء فوت باب but also means to illuminate مس يمس means to touch نار you know fire okay so now let's read this what does it mean Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says here, Allah nuru samawati wal ard. Allah is the mubtada. Nuru nuru is the khabar. Right? As samawati mudafun ilayhi and al ardi is ma'tuf. Ma'tuf ala madha, what's ma'tuf ali? As samawati, what's a harful atf? Wow, that's what's in the same hal. Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. Mathalu nurihi. So now, okay, firstly, what do we mean by that now? We do not understand it literally. Right? The whole verse is an allegory. Right? It's all figurative language. So you cannot say, okay, the essence of Allah is like light or Something like that. No, we don't speak about things like that in relation to Allah. We, we, we have a figurative understanding of this. Allah Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. Meaning, He is the source of light. He is the munawwir of the heavens and the earth. Right? So, you're understanding here, yeah, nur, if I said it's figurative, there has to be a, an indication to that. What is the figure of speech here? We're understanding the word nur as munawwir. He, Munawir. So from the second verb, Nawara, you know, we're the one who gives light, who illuminates something. Munawar, one who is illuminated. Right? So we understand that Allah is the Munawir of the heavens and the earth. Al Madina Tul Munawara. Right? Because it became illuminated when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came. It used to be called Yathrib. Oh, yeah. Al Madina, Ghair Munawara. Yeah, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the Munawir. Allah nuru samawati wal ard. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and what does that mean when we say Allah is the Munawir of Asama wa ta'ala? Does it literally mean Allah gives light to it? Or is, the, is our understanding of light also figurative? So, firstly, the one I say, Nuria has the meaning of Munawir. Then secondly, it's not simply referring to the fact that Allah like illuminates the world with the sun, etc. Or the presence or absence of like physical darkness. It means here yeah, the Hadi. The one who spreads guidance in things and gives guidance to things. So for example, Allah guides the bee as to how to be a bee by giving it that instinct. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given that form of guidance to everything that fulfills its function. It's only us that have a choice in whether we want to accept it or not. But even for us, Allah gave us the guidance in the form of the Quran. Right? So, from the Mufassirin, like at Tabari, they say that the meaning of it here means the one who gives guidance. Like Nurul Hidayah. Um, the, the, the one who illuminates and why how do, how does you how do you get from nur to hidayah in terms of the figurative meaning right the idea of nur of illuminating you it it means the absence of darkness the absence of darkness means you can see you can see you know where you are going you know where you are headed to and that's how the figure of speech goes from nur to hidayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who enables you to see where you are headed. To see through confusion and to, uh, you know, find your way. So some of them would also say, like uh, another Mufassir al-Qurtubi would say, that what is Noor? You say Noor is al-daw'u al-mudrak bil-basar. 
Nur literally means a light that is perceived by your eye. Um, and it has a number of uh, figurative meanings. And one of those figurative meanings is also Hidayah. So, it's, so Nuria is not intended literally. It's firstly intended to, to, for Allah to be the Munawir. But what do we mean by Munawir? The Hadi. Other figurative meanings that may apply to it as well. You would say, for example, um, like they would say, uh, the Arabs would say, "Hada nurul balad." Um, and it, like, if I say this person is the is the light of the city, it means he's like the the. It can also mean he's like a person that when he comes here, he stands out, right? Or he is a person that is revered in the in the society so when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking about the wuduh of his ayat that he say, gives ayat that are bayinat, now he speaks about his own clarity allah nur not only is allah the most apparent because when there's a light then the light is apparent right not only is allah the most apparent he is the thing that enables you to see you understand it so from the perspective that allah is the one that guides you but it's on account of him, like not only is, is the guidance to him that he's visible to you, that he's apparent, that you can conclude that he exists. But when you think about it, he's the reason you are even able to think. He's the reason that you are even able to uh, perceive Hidayah. So that's the difference in using the word Nur as opposed to using the word Munawir. Right? In that when you say the word Nur, then it can refer to the refer to thing from the perspective that by its nature it can be perceived. And the fact that it illuminates to give you that ability to perceive it. You understand? So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah nur samawat wal ard, you know, I can go a step deeper into this and say that you in Arabic, this is a form of balagha. One of the forms of balagha is what we call um this is what we call tashbih like a, a simile or metaphor and the highest form of that metaphor is when you have in arabic the tashbih comprises of a number of parts four parts the mushabbah the mushabbah bihi the thing that you are drawing a resemblance between it and another and, and another thing then you get the mushabbah bihi the thing that it is likened to then you have the wajhu shabbah and the the wajhu shaba is in which way it resembles it. And then you have the, the adatu tashbih. The particle that shows you that there is a, that is a tashbih being created. Like ka, or mathal, or mithla. Right? Now when you want to emphasize the tashbih to the greatest degree, then you leave out the adatu tashbih and the wajhu shaba. That's a very... Uh, like in the rhetoric is considered one of the highest forms of tashbih, tashbih al balir So yeah, it's like Allah saying, Allah is the nur. There's no mithla or ka or anything like that. Nor is Allah telling you in which way is the light. Yeah, mentioning the wajhu shaba. What we would call the difference between a metaphor and a simile. But I'm telling you in, in Arabic terms, you can have like in, 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 in English it would just be the presence of like the like or absence of it. Um, but here yeah, we're also omitting any allusion to the manner in which the one resembles the other. Right? So the kalam makes you ponder. Because you can't have a tashbih without a wajhu shaba. Like if I say, my wife is like the moon. I can mean she's beautiful, she's like the light in the night. I can also mean she's round and full of craters and gray. You understand? Tofik, don't take tips. Yeah? You're not in <laughs> I'm just joking. You must be truthful. Right? So, um, this, that word was Shabbat. The, the absence or presence of it like, dictates how much you probe into the kalam. So, the mere fact that in this verse, Allahu Nuru Sama wa Ta'ala, we don't have the word was Shabbat mentioned. Right? It makes you think about it more. And it, you know, the kalam. Makes you think about it more. And um, in thinking about it, 
you will now ponder in which way is Allah Nur Samawatul Ard. And that's what we're basically doing. We said, firstly, we don't think of Allah as, as a physical thing. So not uh, Nur in the form of like a flame or something like that. But figurative. We went to Munawwir. Then we went to Hadi. But then there's other ma'ani to it as well, which we, which we are yet to ponder about. Right? Or, or, or reflect on, which we'll, I'll mention to you, inshallah, next week as because we already are over 12 o'clock. So, yeah, this is a very uh, allegorical verse. So we'll just look at all of these parts, what, what is intended by it, and what uh, lessons are to be derived from it. So already in that one verse, there's, I mean, in the real, in the, already in that one part of the verse, there's a number of figures of speech there. There's, you know, there's the usage, there's the word usages, as well as the form of the connection of the words and then the potential meanings that it can indicate to. So we'll look into some of that next week, inshallah. We end there for now. What is that, Mullah Khiran? For Akhir Dawana, and Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Just remind me, what was I saying, you know? That navigating the Arabic text, one and two. Yeah, I'll just extract that, uh, that thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. In there for now, yes, I, um, I spoke to Molina, I spoke to Molina Rafik about the, those other Naho books. Uh, last week, he told me this week that there they weren't any extra copies of it yet. So, okay, so did Mr. Dean send you the, the video? Okay, so you see, he just didn't have any printed copies. That's why I couldn't uh, bring it for this week. Uh, but I'm not sure if he's going to get to what we'll see, inshallah. All right, we're there for now. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.